Are you looking for a premium bookshelf speaker option that's a little bit different from the rest? Stay tuned to find out more. Hey guys, it's Jonathan from Smart Home Sounds, a home audio visual retailer based in the UK. And we've got something just a little bit different for you today as we're gonna be taking a look at an audio brand that you might not have heard of yet, which goes by the name of Sonus Faber. And I know what you're thinking, just to make things nice and confusing for you, Sonus Faber does sound awfully similar to Sonos, but they are actually not related in any way. So just to get that out of the way. Um, fun fact, Sonus is actually Latin for sound. So it could be part of the reason why Sonos is named the way it is as well. Either way though, they aren't related. Now we're really keen on showcasing brands that maybe aren't as well known, but in our opinion are ones to keep an eye on or they're just producing exceptional products in the industry. And I'm talking ones that we would genuinely buy and live with ourselves. At the end of the day, if these brands can't get exposure, they'll just never be able to grow. And after testing these out, we thought that they were quality enough to make a video on. So we'll soon be supplying these on our website, if not already, so feel free to check them out. And the link will be in the description below. So I think that's all the admin sorted. Let's jump straight into the video. First things first, let's give you an overview of the brand so you can understand what they're about. Now it must be said they are a high-end audio brand selling bookshelf speakers like these ones for about 800 pounds a pair, all the way up to in excess of 100,000 pounds for their most prestigious speakers. Now Sonus Faber is an Italian brand that was formed in the 1980s by its founder Franco Serblin and he developed the first audio system made out of entirely wood named the Snail before releasing his first bookshelf speaker model a few years later named the Parva. Again made out of wood but with a Kevlar driver due to its stiffness under tension ratio. Now over the years they've continued to innovate new products, preserving their uh, unique appearance but growing their collections. And now they have quite a few different collections aimed at different listeners, ranging from these little bookshelf speakers up to large tower speakers and home cinema components. They pride themselves on being affordable luxury, and I think that is pretty spot on as these speakers place themselves in the higher end of the market, but they're not so luxury that it puts them out of budget for those who are serious about home audio. So let's take a closer look at these Sonus Faber speakers then. So these specific speakers are the Lumina ones, which is the entry version into the Lumina range, which go all the way up to the Lumina 5s. Now the Lumina ones we have here have an RRP of 799 for the pair, which puts them in Bowers & Wilkins 700 series territory. And as you might know, we are a huge fan of Bowers & Wilkins as they are just so hard to compete with for the price that you pay. Now we'll talk a little bit more about how the sound quality compares in just a little bit, but for now, can we just take a moment to admire the finesse of the design of these speakers? I can honestly say these are probably the nicest looking bookshelf speakers I've ever seen. They just emanate luxury and Italian flair and this Italian leather wrapping on the sides just looks incredible, I have to say. But because it is leather, I do have to say that these are not vegan friendly and they do use real multi-layer wood on the face of the speaker and you can choose between three different designs, walnut, black and Wenger. Now I did have to Google how to say that last one, I must say. So we actually have that Wenger version here, which is a pretty neat design in my opinion. I just love the little chrome detailing around the tweeter and the driver. It just helps to give it that aesthetic edge over its competitors. Now the tweeter is a 29 millimeter silk dome tweeter, the same that's found in the Sonetto series higher up in the range, and this four inch midwoofer is exclusive to this collection. Then instead of a base port, you get a reflex port, um, which is ideal to give maximum versatility of placement. So theoretically, you should be able to put these pretty close to a wall with very little impact on sound performance. Then if we turn the speaker around, You'll see there's uh, two pairs of nickel plated speaker terminals which will allow you to buy wire them to your amplifier if your amplifier supports this. Now I'm so glad they put so much effort into the design because so many speakers are basically just black boxes and at the end of the day speakers are a fairly large piece of furniture in your room. The Lumina ones are the most compact options of the passive bookshelf speaker range coming in at 280 millimeters high, 148 millimeters wide and 213 millimeters deep. So this is the sort of size that's ideal for a small to medium sized living room. If you are looking to fill larger spaces then you probably will need to look higher up in the range. 
Now these are obviously passive speakers, so you'll wire these up to a suitable amplifier. And being quite high-end speakers, you'll want to make sure that you're using an amplifier within their recommended amplifier requirements of between 30 watts and 100 watts per channel. So you'll see in a lot of their brand marketing, the Sonos amp um, featured to power these, as you do get the most out of both the speakers and the amp in this pairing. For us, as a Sonos specialist, it's actually quite refreshing to see traditional hi-fi companies perceive Sonos as a viable option with their products. And because of the streaming capabilities with its vast ecosystem, it does make a lot of sense for a lot of customers. Of course, you can use your own amplifier and have a bit of fun with pairings, and you might find more uh, powerful amps like the Blue Sound Power Node will get slightly more punch out of these. Now you can also always attach a Sonos port to it if you want to benefit from the Sonos ecosystem specifically. Next up, we're gonna jump right into that sound quality test now as I know how much value you guys get from them. So we're excited to show you how they sound now that we've got our Binaura microphone, which captures a lot of the raw audio. Now, of course, it's not gonna translate 100% over to you, but it does give you a general flavor of the overall sound profile. And just for reference, we're powering these with the Sonos amp, so I hope you enjoy. I hope that translated across. What we found with these particular speakers is that they were incredibly expressive, precise, and sweet sounding. The instruments really translate well, and music like classical, acoustic, and jazz really work well. Now, we listened to Leon Bridges' new album, which is a new recording, and it sounded so soulful and clean amongst other music. Now, I'll be honest, I did have doubts about the bass on these due to their physical size, but we were actually pleasantly surprised for their little size. Obviously, these are not gonna blow the roof off in terms of the low end, but I don't think they try to, as you can always add one of the Sonus Faber Gravis 1 or 2 subwoofers into the mix, and the bass is then taken care of completely. Now, I'm always listening out for the clarity of the vocals, and these were crisp and detailed, and although the speakers could do with sounding a little tighter rhythmically, overall, I think they are very impressive indeed. These are relaxed, easy listening speakers for those of you into your classical, jazz, and acoustic music. If you're into dance and R&B, that sort of thing, you probably will want to look towards adding a sub or choosing a different speaker altogether. So, what's our verdict on the Sonus Faber Lumina 1s then? Well, if you're after premium sound quality but are also quite conscious about design and how they'll fit in your room, I think these are worth a look. I'm probably gonna be the first audio reviewer to call these speakers attention-seeking in every respect, but in a good way. Um, their design and sound entices you in and you feel like you wanna to listen to them. Now, I've personally got the Bowers & Wilkins 607s at home and while I love how they sound, these Sonus Fabers look stunning in comparison. These do blow the 607s out of the park, in my opinion, in terms of sound quality, but you do pay for the extra oomph. Now these are on the pricey end and you may be able to find better sounding speakers than these at this price point, but I think it would be more of a challenge to find speakers that share the same amount of elegance and sophistication aesthetically. I would definitely advise using a high quality amplifier out of them so that you can get the most out of them. And what's important to understand is that these are not just a high-end brand that are all about aesthetics. They have created some great sounding speakers. But as I said before, I do think if you're after a lot of bass output, you'll want to either look higher up in the range or pair these with a subwoofer. For us, these are worth considering and definitely have a place in the bookshelf market. Just give them a go and see what you think. So do let me know guys what you think about these sorts of videos where we bring your attention to brands that are not as well known as brands like Sonos in the comments below. Would you take the plunge on these or would you stick to what you know? 
I'll link some pages below for you to check out more if you want to look into them further. But for now, if you could do me a massive favor and drop me a like before you go and consider subscribing if you enjoy these sorts of videos as we've got lots planned in the near future. Thanks as always for watching and hopefully see you very soon.